Hey everyone, as you guys probably realized, there's no text on screen right now. Basically, I know that a lot of you come here just for the reading, and I do talk a lot, and I admit that, and I I fully realize that, which I know is so annoying for some of you. So to make it easier for those people who don't want to listen to me ramble, um, when the colored background is on and off, uh, um, it's either the intro or the outro and the questions. So, and the reading will be obviously where the text is. So I hope this makes it easier. Um, so yeah, thanks all for coming back to my town. This is chapter two of the light in darkness. Um, and yeah, this is chapter two of Light and Darkness. I decided to make a commitment, and I'm not too sure about it yet, but so far I'm sticking with it. Um, Basically, each one is going to be 1,000 upwards, hopefully 1,000 to 1,500. Chapter one was 1,300 something, this one's 1,100 and something. So it's not a tiny bit of writing, okay? Um, So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying it. Um... Thanks for, this is the 300 special, but I'm already at 333 subscribers, which is mind-boggling. Thank you all so much, and let's get on to Light and Darkness Chapter 2. Light and Darkness Chapter 2. Marinette watched as he left and settled down, and settled down. One of her many powers was creation. She thought it was from her accumulation, but no. It was her own power. At least one of them. Her favorite creation was was one she named Tiki. Marinette had some memories where she saw a creature as such. The memories were not her own. She was yet to realize they were the memories of the Guardian. She talked with the creature for hours. She watched as her father sent villains. She watched as the heroes took them down. She watched as and was a little impressed at their synchronization. But she had defeated them time and time again. It was fun watching the fights. They were different to the world of darkness she lived in. The heroes joked and laughed. They ended every fight with bumped hands. The time came for her to meet Shat. She detransformed and got rid of Tiki. She sat with her notebook and sketched the villains off. She knew them off by heart. They served her sometimes. She was excited. She hoped he wouldn't bring the whole mistress thing up. She found out that she enjoyed getting to know people. Being her didn't come with many friends, besides the one she made. She waited patiently for her new companion. At least, she hoped he was a companion. Hey, princess, he said sweetly. Hi, kitty. Come here. Come sit next to me. I'm not going to hurt you, she smiled. She was used to people fearing her. Kitty? I like that. I know you won't hurt me. You can't. He assumed, taking his spot next to her. You'd be surprised, Kitty. Thank you, she said. For what? I haven't done anything for you. You saved me from stormy weather, he said. For being here. I've never talked to another person without them being scared, she revealed. What? Why would someone be scared of you? You're nice and kind, he said. I may be, but my father is a scary and powerful man. He makes me train. I know how to fight fairly well. I don't have any friends or family besides him, she said. Really? How bad can he be? I'll be your friend. You deserve one, he smiled. With that, she rested his, her hair on his shoulder and looked to the city, still amazed by the beauty she had been hidden away from for so many years. He smiled at her. He wondered how someone so sweet can be so lonely and scary to so many. Her head started hurting and she shot up. She paced back and forth in front of him suddenly. She got these headaches when she got new memories and clues to her life. She walked around the confused cat. Are you okay, princess? He said. It was odd how they were talking one moment and she was walking around head in her hands the next. Headache. It's just a bad headache. I'll be fine in a few minutes, she said trying to stop him from questioning her more. It happens often? He asked. Yes, it goes away when I it goes away when I get the memories, she said, answering his question and giving him a set of new ones. The memories? 
What do you mean? He asked. Her headache calmed down and she sat next to him again. Sometimes I get memories. They aren't mine. My father is not my real father. He adopted me when I was five. I don't have real parents. The memories are like clues. I wish they would stop, she said. Are you okay now? Do you need to go to the doctor? Where is your father? He asked. It stopped. No, no doctor. I don't want a doctor. I can't tell you that, she said. What do you mean? Why can't you say? Who's your father? I want to help. Yeah, he said desperately. He will kill me if I say. I can't tell you who he is. You'll die if you help, she said. He liked this girl. She was kind and funny. She was also sad and a bit broken. She had a worse childhood than him. He knew what it was like to be adopted. He just ended up in a better place afterwards. He wanted to give her that too. She deserved that. She should have gotten that too. Poor girl. They changed the topic and started to have more light-hearted conversations. In the end, they realized that he... He didn't. In the end, they realized that he didn't know her name. Princess, I have to leave, but you never told me your name, he said. She felt a little silly. silly. Oh, I don't have one. My father doesn't address me by name. My name was Marinette once, but I do not remember my last name. My current one is... No, I can't. She remembered that she didn't want to say. She thought if he knew, he would stop hanging out with her. He would make her tell she would be a traitor to her father. That would be bad. What's so bad about your dad? I want to know you, he said pleadingly. I want to know you too. I wish I could. I really do. I hate my home, she said. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have pushed you. You feel like one of my best friends, he said. How do you think I feel? You feel like my best my best friend. You are my only, she started. I know, you told me. I wish I could help you, but my, I can't. My identity is... He started. I understand. Trust me, I understand. Please keep meeting me, she said, hoping she hadn't angered him. She valued him already. Of course I'll keep meeting you, he reassured her. She let out a sigh of relief and returned her head to the original spot on his shoulder. This was nice for both of them. They had only met twice, but there was something special, something that could grow. It felt right, felt comfortable, felt safe. It was an escape from the opposite life both of them led. First had an escape from his life protecting people in Paris. For Marinette, a life obeying her her father. Chat, she asked. Hmm, he hummed. She took a deep breath. Are you okay, princess? He stuck to her. He stuck to her nickname. I'll be here every day, this time for the next five days. I want you to visit, she said. Of course I will. What about after the five days? Will I see you after? He asked. Can't say. After five days, I go home. I don't know what will happen after that, she said, regret in her heart. She didn't want this. I don't know if I will be able, will be okay without you. I know it only has I know it has only been two days. It feels like I've known you forever. Like you're my best friend, he said. I feel that too. I'll try and come back, she said. And that is where we're gonna end it today. Um I hope you guys are enjoying. I'm really enjoying this series, so I hope you guys are enjoying it. Otherwise, I mean no I wouldn't want to get like into conflict with you guys because I enjoy listening to your opinions, but I also value my own, so it gets a bit complicated. Mm. So, yeah. Um, I got distracted. I need to stop doing that, shouldn't I? Let's let's do... um, Yeah, so as you guys can see, a new background for the outro. This way, for the people who come here just for the reading, you guys know. But if you came here just for the reading, I don't know why you'd listen. I should put that in the comments. Um, yeah, making notes to myself. Um, this series is not near done yet. So, yeah, hopefully it'll be my longest one. So that when I release the full version, it does. It is a very long one. Because I want to do something special for 200 subscribers. Because that's really cool. And it happened way faster than I thought it would. 
Um, yeah, so question of the day. Let's go for let's go for a classic one of if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Now the superpower can't be I can have any superpower I want or I can have anything and stuff like that. It has to be like an actual superpower. Um so let's see. Um I don't want the ability to control matter. I think that yeah. So like, you know, earth, rock, water, that type of stuff. So I couldn't make it, but I could control it. And the reason I do it is because I think stuff would be so much easier to do. And, like, I could continue to be my lazy self and be like, oh, I want a bottle of water. Magic. Move it towards me. And, you know, I get really stressed and scared when I'm in pools, even though I love swimming. And, like, if I'm trying to go really fast and I, like, need to breathe as well, it gets really annoying. So I would, like, bend the water so it doesn't go near my face. Which I guess would technically be cheating if I was doing a race or something. But, hey, all is fair. (laughs) And that's not true. Don't cheat and stuff. Um, Yeah, so I'd want to bend matter. Other than that, I think maybe I'd pick flying if I couldn't have bend matter. Because, you know, how awesome would it be to fly around... And, you know, I could continue to be lazy. I think that's my main thing. Anyway, I think I'm going to go and make tea. Bye.